In this problem, we're told a mass M at the end of a spring oscillates with a frequency of 0.83 Hz. When an additional 680 gram mass is added to M, the frequency is 0.6 Hz. What is the value of M? So in order to solve this problem, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and relate these different variables. So you need to know the formula for frequency, which is frequency equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over M. And so this is how I want you to think about solving this, right? So I want you to think of it like a momentum problem where you have uh, something at the beginning is equal to the final, right? So beginning equals final, right? And so for momentum problems, you say the momentum in the beginning is equal to the momentum momentum at the end, right? But for this problem, think about these different variables, right? So for this equation for frequency, we know that the only variables that change in this, right, for a specific scenario is the f and the m, right? So meaning if we can get fm to be solved for this, right, is going to be equal to some constant k, then that means we can just go ahead and set uh, the fm or whatever it is on that side equal to the final, right? Because the k isn't going to change for both of them, meaning we can just leave it out. So what we want to do is get this with f and m on the same side. So go ahead and do that. We can multiply both sides by 2 pi, right? So you don't really need to pay attention to this, but just keep in mind how we're actually getting this. So 2 pi f is equal to the square root of k over m. If you square both sides, this is going to become 4 pi squared f squared equals k over m. If you multiply both sides by m, right, that's going to get rid of that, and then we divide both sides by 4 pi squared. So you'll see why we do this in a second. But you're going to get m times f squared is equal to k over 4 pi squared. Right? And look at this side. This side is just constant. So meaning it's not going to change for any the uh, beginning or the initial, right? So beginning is when it's having uh, a certain hertz, right, and a certain mass, and then we add something to it, so that's the final. So essentially what we can do is set this, right, m f squared is equal to m final f final squared, right? So if we have two scenarios, right, the mass in the beginning times the frequency in the beginning is equal to the final mass, whatever it is, times the frequency at the end squared, right? So let's just go ahead and solve for these. So what are the different things? So m is the mass in the beginning. Well, what's the mass in the beginning? So we're told a mass m at the end of a spring, right? So we're just told it's m. So we actually don't know the mass in the beginning, and that's what we're trying to find. So we're trying to solve for this variable right here. Well, what's the frequency in the beginning? So what's f? The frequency in the beginning, we're told it oscillates with a frequency of 0.83 hertz, meaning uh, it's just going to be 0.83 hertz is its initial frequency, OK? What about the mass at the end? So the mass final, I want you to think of about it as if we have a box, right? So imagine this is our mass m, right? So this is the mass in the beginning. And what they're telling us is we're adding 680 grams. So imagine we're adding some mass box to this again, right? So this is 680 grams. So if this whole thing is the mass final, well, what's the mass final, right? It's just going to be this mass plus this mass, right? Because this is the total final mass. And so essentially, that's what it is, right? So this is just going to be, if we start plugging stuff in, m times frequency, 0.83 squared is equal to the mass final, which is the normal mass, plus the mass we're adding, which is 680 grams. But we want to write it as kilograms, right? So 680 grams in kg is just 0.68 kg. You're just dividing by 1,000. So 0.68 kg, so plus 0.68, multiplied by the frequency final squared. And they tell us at the end, uh, after we add it, its frequency is 0.6 hertz. So this is just going to be 0.6 squared, right? So now we've got it all laid out, and we just got to solve for m, right? That's what they want us to find. So what we want to do is just go ahead and multiply this out. So m times 0.83 squared is equal to m times 0.6 squared is just 0.6 squared m plus 0.68 multiplied by 0.6 squared. All I did was multiply this out. And then what we want to do is just subtract this to the other side. Right? And so I'm actually not going to do the math yet, but m times 0.83 squared minus 0.6 squared times m right, is equal to 0.68 multiplied by 0.6 squared. And we can factor out an m here now, right? So just imagine this is we're factoring out an m. So we just have 0.83 squared uh, minus 0.6 squared. All right, all we did was factor out an m. And then what we can do now is just divide by m, or sorry, divide by this, right? So this whole thing. And you're just going to get m is equal to 0.83 squared minus 0.6 squared all over, or sorry, it's on, yeah, I messed it up. It's on the bottom. So 0.68 times 0.6 squared all over 0.83 squared minus 0.6 squared, right? Just this, we're just dividing this thing over, right? So this thing over this thing, right? So when you go ahead and do this, 
you're going to get, so just go ahead and plug this in your calculator and you're going to get m is equal to about 0.74. So that's just about what you're going to get. So 0.74. And then what you're going to want to go ahead and do is keep in mind the units, right? So mass we measure in kilograms. So this is going to be kilograms. So your mass in this case is going to be equal to 0.74 kg. So yeah, this right here is going to be the value of m, right? So the mass at the beginning essentially. Uh, but yeah, so this is your answer and hopefully you found this useful.